I made a difference. And, you know, we are definitely heroes. When people throw out the word heroes, the sacrifices that were made, but the lives that were saved made it all worth it. It takes a real special person to volunteer to live at work for 75 days away from family to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Today in part two of our mini series on Park Springs Life Plan Community in Atlanta, Georgia, I'm going to introduce you to a few very special employees who did just that. I'm Terry Sullivan, the founder of Aging Choices. Last week in the first part of our two part mini series on Park Springs, Donna Moore, the Chief Operating Officer at Isaacson Living, shared the story behind the innovative idea to have staff members lock in to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in their community. I put an article out of the Washington Post and, you know, it became very evident to me that the single most important thing we could do would be to limit human traffic. And that one seed of an idea of how do we limit human traffic became lock-in. 75 staff members lived on campus for 75 days, away from family and friends to keep the members of the community safe. Today, we're going to put the spotlight on the employees as they share their experiences and the sacrifices that they made. We're going to introduce you first to Nadia Williams. Nadia is the healthcare administrator at Park Springs. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, our pleasure. So tell us, how has life been now that you're living back at home after the lockdown? So it's been definitely interesting. I had to adjust to uh, going back to what was normal before the lock-in. Yeah. So little things, not being able to go up the hall and see my favorite members and not being able to, you know, bond with the staff that was here was a little different. Yeah. But um, I get to drive again. Um, not so much going out because <laughs> not doing that just yet, but I was able to, to spend time with my family and my boyfriend. So it was nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. So well, let's go back to March uh, when Donna first introduced this idea of the of locking in and taking care of your members. What was your initial reaction when you heard when she when she brought it up? Um, so when we first discussed this um, locking together, to me it was always a no brainer. Yeah. Um, I always knew that I was going to be part of this. I knew that you know it was something I couldn't miss. I being a leader in um, this organization, I had to lead by example. And I could never ask, you know, the staff to do something that I wasn't willing to also do myself. Yeah. Um, but I also saw it as an opportunity to get to know them, um, get to know the members. And it's just, it was a win-win for me. You know, these this experience was definitely invaluable. And I just, I wouldn't have wanted to miss out on it at all. Wow, that's amazing. So there really wasn't a question. You just knew this is what I needed to do. That's pretty amazing. So what was it like living at the community for 11 weeks? It was amazing. I mean, the first couple of weeks, we definitely, we wore our masks, we um, had our PPE and everything. And then after that, once we realized that, you know, there was no COVID in the building, we really became family. You know, it was a sisterhood throughout. We got to interact with the members and the members became our, our family as well. We got to love them, hug them, find out their stories because they have rich, they, a lot of them had rich lives and a lot of stories to share. Um, we became, you know, um, partners or um, hairdressers, um, daughters to some of them. So it was really, it was fulfilling and then of course for us as staff we got to bond we got to know each other a lot more uh, we also got an understanding of what each other um, does on a daily basis so some we, we get so hectic sometimes that we don't know what the other is doing and you know we had we got to learn a lot about our roles within the organization as well yeah, there's a lot. I mean, when you really think of the human component of that, it's just building more intimacy and connections with everyone around you, right? In a, in a much more tighter yeah. circle, which is pretty incredible. 
everyone that participated in this as part of the team um, made sacrifices, right? Because although it's a beautiful thing that you all came together to support the members, there's the family side and there's the other part. Uh, so can you tell our viewers and listeners, you know, what big life event you were not able to attend and what was that like for you? Absolutely. So it was my baby sister's wedding yeah. and it was certainly difficult not to be around for it. And we, weddings are so huge in my family and it's something that my sister and I have um, discussed since we were young. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. We're going to wear this. And, yeah. you know, no one imagined that the time that she actually did get married will be in the middle of something like a pandemic like this. Yeah. So being, I knew that once I was locked in, leaving wasn't an option, um, but I still wanted to be able to be there for her. So I was the maid of honor. I did join via Zoom and I stood by her side and I, um, I backed her. I was there for her emotionally. I was there for her in the best way that I could be. You know and it was emotional it was very emotional i was she was you know obviously sad because i wasn't there but at the same time it was gratifying for me because i was able to do both i was able to serve her in the best way that i could at the time but i was able to also serve the members because it you know they both needed me at that time so you know it was emotional it was a wonderful day for the family yeah, uh, I'm sure she was super proud of you too for what you were doing, and um, but I am sure very sad at the same time. Um, and this is just a question that came to my mind. So when you participated in the Zoom, were, were, were there any folks from the community that were there as well to watch what was going on? Or were you by yourself? So, um, briefly, at some in the beginning, I think Donna was there and Tisha was there, and actually Deborah was as well. And then towards the end, I think they just gave me that time and that intimacy with my family and the privacy. So it was um, me during the, just alone during the ceremony. Um, and I gave my speech alone, you know, and I had that intimate moment with my sister and I was alone then. All right, that just gave me chills. So um, that's <laughs> super, super cool. Where was the wedding, if you don't mind me asking? So the wedding was in Florida. Um, it was a, a COVID wedding, so it wasn't, you know, huge. It was in at our house and it was outside by the pool, but it was lovely, it was beautiful. And um, they were happy. I just, even now that I think about it, I, it brings me to tears because she was so happy. So. That's all we can ask for, right? Whether it's our children's, our sisters, our siblings, you know, that they find that right person, then they're happy. Um, uh, clearly, uh, clearly uh, a lot for you uh, in this whole thing, right? Great, good, bad, indifferent, all the, the different pieces. So what did you learn about yourself as a person during this experience and during the lockdown? I learned um, that it is okay as a leader to be vulnerable. <sighs> I saw that when I was vulnerable, when I opened up, they opened up to me as well. And it was a, it's a different dynamic now. I'm able to, um, they know me. Mm -hmm. They know who I am at the core, you know. Um, they know when I say I love you guys, they know I mean it. They know um, that I want the best for them, you know, because as a leader, these are some of the things that you hear all the time. You know, I want the best for you. I, I, I appreciate you. But when you're living with someone for 77 days, you can't hide it. Yeah. So how you feel about them shows and it showed. And I, you know, it would have taken years to develop these relationships. And it would have taken years for them to know me the way they know me now. And for me to know them the way I know them now, had we not lived with each other. And that I am so grateful for because I was taught, um, you know, how to lead, but be open. And I was taught to how to uh, accept everyone for who they are and where they are and kind of um, groom them to be better if they wanted to be better. And I learned what their dreams were. It was just, <laughs> I learned so much from this experience. I learned friendship. I learned unity. I mean, 
so many things at once when a group of people band together with the same goal we can accomplish anything and that is exactly what we did that's really neat so you really grew very quickly even as a leader in a short period of time but that intimacy um, the vulnerability piece is really interesting because all good relationships start with a little bit of vulnerability so as a leader um, very cool Mm -hmm. very very cool so when you left the community and you were walking out of the doors and you had your suitcase and you, you knew you were going home, what was that like? What did that feel like after 11 years? I felt, I had mixed emotions. You know, you would think that, you know, you get to go home after so long and you would be happy. And I was happy. I was happy that I got to, I was going to spend time with my boyfriend and, you know, we we're going to reconnect. But then a part of me felt sad because those 77 days became my norm and I was used to as I said you know if I thought about a certain member I would just run to their room you know there were days where there were members where I'd go and watch movies with them if they couldn't sleep or checkers if they were feeling restless and I did not have that anymore so I felt you know that sadness and then I also felt sad that I was leaving the staff you know because they were as I said, it was a sisterhood. So you will, it's like leaving your sister or, you know, leaving your friend behind. And we had a system. I think we had, you know, we watched TV together. We, um, you know, played games in the evenings when we were off. And, you know, that we know was going to come to an end. But I was also happy, you know, that I was going in to be with my family again, my boyfriend again with new experiences to share. So I had mixed feelings about it. (laughs) That's uh, yeah, a a little mixture of both, right? Because you get used to that. 11 weeks is really a long time to spend that much time together too. So Um, so I hear that there was a special surprise guest waiting for you uh, when you left the community in the parking lot. Can you tell the listeners who that was? Yes, I can. It was my mom and I had no clue I had absolutely no clue she was coming. I had spoken to my parents the night before and they prepped me and said, you know, we're not coming. So sorry, we'll see you in a week or so. So I'd been telling everyone I'm not going to see my parents. But inside, deep down, I was really disappointed that I wasn't going to see them. And I think even as I was exiting, my mom called me and said, you know, how is it going? Are you, have you exited yet? And I said, you know, not yet. So to see her was an absolute shock. It was a, such a shock, but I was so happy and I couldn't contain my emotions. Tricky, <laughs> I, I felt tricky, tricky so lady. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I felt like a child again, you know, running to your mom to, just take care of you just to be in my mom's arms and I was just overwhelmed with emotion yeah I can't imagine I can't imagine I'm told there's uh, there are surprises for me that I'm excited to see what they are so Nadia I heard there was a surprise waiting for you at home can you share with our viewers and listeners what that surprise was absolutely so when I got home the rest of my family were there my sister her husband my dad uh, my boyfriend, yes, and they had, uh, my boyfriend had decorated the house. Um, there were different areas. There were gifts everywhere and um, heroes um, in rose petals all over the house. Uh-huh. And um, he had made dinner for us to have together as a family. And they all let me know how proud they were of me and how much they appreciated the sacrifice. So it was an amazing yeah welcoming home so that was the surprise that I had no clue about at the time he sounds like a good man yes so um is there anything else that you'd like to add you know I always one of the things I always end up uh, an interview with is is you know our life experience will bring different things to us is is there anything else you'd like to add or share um you know as your as, as your experience yes absolutely I mean this experience has changed me for the rest of my life. I mean, yeah. there's no way that I could look back at this experience and not feel fulfilled. Um, 
I gave my all to serve members. And I am grateful and I'm getting emotional because I'm extremely grateful. There's no way that I'll forget this. Yeah. Um, uh, the things I learned, the people that I grew to love and they grew to love me. Um, I, I, I made a difference. And, you know, we are definitely heroes. When people throw out the word heroes, the sacrifices that were made, but the lives that were saved, yeah, made it all worth it. And I'm just so grateful. That's awesome. I, you, you're a hero. You're a hero to us and for to me. So thank you for what you've done. And you know, a lot of us are safer at home and don't have that luxury of not being able to, um, you know, to to need to. I mean, people depend on you, and it's the profession you chose. And and really, thank you for doing what you do. And and thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, it's 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 there needs to be more good news out there and and thank you for sharing i really appreciate it thank you for having me and thank you for giving me the opportunity to share our next guest is tisha roberts tisha is the nursing director at park springs tisha thanks for joining us today thanks for having me here it's a pleasure Thank you. Uh, I'll start with the same question I began Nadia's interview with. How has life been post lock-in? Um, life has been great, I must say. Um, it's a, it was a bit of mixed feeling leaving the facility. Um, but being home, I bought a new house um, while I was in the lock-in. Wow. So it's awesome. Just enjoying the children, enjoying being at that new home. That's awesome. So uh, it's incredible. I mean, you have five kids. So can you describe the emotions of leaving your five kids and husband at home uh, while you went to live at work at the community, which would, which you thought was going to be just short, right? Two to four weeks and ended up, ended up turning into 11 weeks. So, so tell us about the emotions that came out of that. I know. Um, it was, I mean, some strong emotions because, um, you know, I was thinking like, this is going to be real hard. But mm -hmm. I remember my mom, uh, she was a nurse for 33 years. And um, when I was younger, I watched her, you know, going hills, travel through hills and valleys, being away from us, uh, just to care for her patients at the time. So, you know, with her, you know, living with me, I was, I am able to do some of those things and just render the care that the members here at Park Springs really need. That's awesome. So you had a wonderful role model. My mom was a physical therapist assistant. She worked in a nursing home. So I, I had that role model too, which is kind of what influenced me. So uh, that's, that's a really great story. So um, I, imagine, uh, I imagine that since you lived at your work, uh, you probably worked more hours than you normally would. Can you describe the working environment for us? Um, definitely. Um, it, it was definitely longer shifts yeah. um, because while we're living here. Yeah. So I had to take on while overseeing the nursing department. I still took on other roles um, such as cleaning, doing supplies, um, just fitting in where we could. Um, at times I was on the floor doing medication paths. Um, we worked in the kitchen, so definitely the hours were longer, but as a team, we came together and we pulled through, you know, whatever we had to do to make this enjoyable, livable, and a, a great experience for ourselves and our members. Yeah, that, that I mean, it's an incredibly inspirational story. I mean, it sounds to, that you, you developed a, another family, right? So uh, last week, Donna said that uh, she made she made a point and it was important to her that that you didn't burn out and that your team members didn't burn out and that you were able to have some fun. You know, what type of activities uh, did you do with the other team members there to bring some fun to this experience? Can you share some of that with us? Definitely. We had a blast. Um, some evenings we had karaoke. Um, when there was time for birthdays, we had birthdays. Um, as for me, I had my birthday 
spent here uh -huh. so, um, was memorable for me and we had a memorable event that i'm pretty sure no one on the team will forget <laughs> so i mean i i now with covid we can't blow candles but <laughs> uh yeah yeah that makes I, sense <laughs> I totally forgot while we were there. So I blew my candles. <laughs> so I ate that cake all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody watched you eating cake going, this isn't right. <laughs> but I you know, totally forget about that. So um, it, it's definitely a memorable experience. We also had a time when uh, it was Mother's Day yeah. and we had um, a car show. So all the cars came around and uh, they displayed heroes. We, we felt really great. It, it, it was really inspirational for the team, you know, just to see that people acknowledged what we are trying to do um, in the lock-in. It, it was a very memorable experience and we did have fun while we were locked in here. That's great. I mean, it sounds to me like the members were super appreciative of you uh, and your other team members um, really sacrificing to, to, to help care for them, right? And to, and to support them uh, in these times. Um, can you describe for us some of the sacrifices that you made um, personally, you know, with your family while living on campus? Um, it was definitely a sacrifice. Um, I have five children uh, with the last one being three years old. <laughs> so wow. it was definitely a surprise not being able to just touch them, hug them. And whenever they came, they saw me either from the balcony <laughs> waving at them, you know, not being able to just touch and just being close. They could see me, but not being able to touch, you know, it was definitely a sacrifice. And um, amidst that sacrifice, I know, I know I'm their hero too, <laughs> you know, knowing that I'm here spending time making sure that members are okay. I'm ma also making sure that they are okay because I'm able to stay at work and not bring anything home to them. So I was keeping them safe and also keeping the members here, making sure that they are safe. So that's definitely a huge sacrifice that was made. Yeah, really multifaceted, isn't it? You have the protection of your children, you have the mom role that you have, right? And being there for your children. It says a lot about your husband as well, uh, who is there to support them. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So my husband, he's my backbone, my mom, both of them really held it down for me while I was locked in here. So that, that's, that's awesome. definitely a plus. For me. Yeah, you're blessed. You're blessed. Tisha, when you saw your family for the first time and you went home for the first time, uh, can you tell us about that experience with your children and your husband? Yes, definitely. That was an awesome feeling. Once I pulled up, um, mark you, this is a new home, so I've never been there. Um, my kids, they had a banner on the, the lawn. Uh, they signed all of their names and they wrote for Eero and they had balloons and so that melted my heart you know, I, feel like I want to cry again <laughs> so you know i had to cry in that moment just to see that you know my kids my husband my mom they they thought i was a hero they thought i was a cool super hero <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome so i you said something that i would just like to ask you one more question you said it was a new home so tell us about that how how'd that come about and what and and how did you handle that during the pandemic Oh, <laughs> that was, um, you know, a little bit of <laughs> crazy because um, we thought initially we were going to be here for, you know, up to probably a month, the longest. So I started the process before the lock-in. So everything had to be done, started now to be, be, be done over the phone, on the computer, you know, having my, my, my family taking over everything from me. So that was awesome. It was amazing. I only saw the house once. So um, once I got home, everything was brand new. Everything, I, I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> it's incredible. 
it, yeah, it was an amazing feeling, you know, just being home and uh, enjoying a great Jamaican cooked meal. Oh, yum. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so you actually literally bought a new home while you were in lockdown and then moved into a new home afterwards. Right. That is a big, I mean, those are big decisions, right, in your life. So that's incredible. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your new home. Thank you. I would not have done this with no other crew. We had the best team ever to be in this lockdown. It was an amazing ride. And um, we got stressed out at time, but we made it through. We pulled through. So what did you learn about your teammates during this experience? Um, some of the experiences or what I've learned about my teammates that we can really pull through, you know, this pandemic or we can pull through crisis situations. And um, once we work together as a team, really you're powerful, anything can be done and we made it happen. Um, you know, we didn't fall short of anything. We just came together and ensure that our members were well taken care of. We ensure that the team members were taken care of, you know, and ensure that we took care of ourselves. So that was a great experience. Um, we built relationships. Um, we know, we now know our members more than anything, more than ever before. And that's, you know, just a great, feeling great experience to really have at your job, especially in healthcare. You, you, you know your members that well. If something goes wrong, you know that, okay, something's definitely wrong because you know them now inside out, their preferences, their likes, their dislikes, when they want to wake up, when they want to go to bed. So, you know, it was definitely a great experience. Um, That's interesting. It's made one of those things that you might not think about that it creates a greater intimacy between your coworkers as well as the members of the community. Um, and, you know, during this experience for yourself, Tisha, um, what did you learn about yourself through this? Definitely in the lock in, I learned that, you know, in a leadership role, you're not just entitled to just stick to one position. I, Learn to be more open, more submissive to my role, more submissive to my team members also. Um, so that's definitely a plus. They know, they now know me, they're, they're, they can come to me more, you know, they feel comfortable coming to me, I should say, um, with any issues that they may be having or before they probably think that, you know. Yeah. They're not sure who to go to. Now we're more open. We're more comfortable being around each other as teammates. That's really cool because at, at the end of the day, it's really about building trust, right? So that the intimacy increases between everybody. Everybody's wearing different hats. You're stepping into different roles that you might not have stepped in before because you're all trying to support each other. And then you really become more of a, a team or like a machine, you know, that you're right. really working comfortably together. That's pretty cool. Very cool. So clearly you all had a mission and the mission was to protect your members and protect each other. So how did that feel knowing that you were contributing to, um, I don't want to say a cause because cause doesn't sound right, but that you were contributing to a, a movement to, you know, to really protect no one's seen an, an epidemic like this. So how did that feel for you, Tisha? Um, <laughs> you know, we didn't know, I don't think either of us knew what we were walking to, but we knew we had to do this. Yeah. Um, I knew as a nurse first yeah. that I had to do this. The members needed me and um, I had to be there to complete my role as a nurse yeah. and to ensure that their safety, you know, that's of foremost importance and um, number one importance. Um, so I think that it's an amazing feeling to have accomplished a, a task that we had set out to do. That's awesome. That's very, really awesome. Thank you for what you do. So favorite memory from this experience? Is there anything that stands out for you or makes your heart sing? <laughs> oh, I, I think uh, there, there are 
there were a lot of or there are a lot of memories but definitely like i said um that cake <laughs> memory definitely stood out and that i will never forget that and you know there are other memories there, there are so many memories that we created in here and just the memory of just being able to be with our members having them feel so comfortable with us around um they never felt alone um they know that park springs uh team is with them and they were not alone throughout this COVID pandemic so that was an awesome feeling and that's a memory that I will never forget. Tisha, every single time I do one of these interviews and podcasts, there's always one thing that someone says that gives me chills. And I think at the end of the day with the pandemic, isolation is a huge issue for um, elderly, uh, the elderly, our elders in our communities, as well as a lot of folks that may live alone, but that, that was very moving, so thank you. Um, so the word hero has been you know, rightfully used uh, to describe frontline workers like yourself during the pandemic. Do you consider yourself a hero? Well, for me, I'm just doing my job as a nurse. Um, I definitely just felt like that was just doing my job. <laughs> so, you know, um, being in healthcare as a nurse, that, that's what you're supposed to do really. Yeah. You know, that's the role we chose. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners or anything else that you'd like to add maybe about your fellow team or thanking your family? I just wanted to give you the opportunity to add anything that you might want to add. I guess, you know, I must thank all my teammates for the sacrifice that they made um for this journey and for my family i appreciated them just knowing that the sacrifice i was making was worth it and i i know i felt when i got home i know i'm their hero too <laughs> so they showed me that i'm their hero you know just was sticking out for my members at park springs and being a you know a great nurse <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, as a, as moms, right? We want to be good role models right. for our children. So that's that's an amazing. So Tisha, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to share your story with us and the Aging Choices listeners and uh, or watchers, I should say. You completely are a hero in my book. And uh, thank you for doing what you do as a nurse. And thank you for the the sacrifice you made with your families and your family in order to take care of the members of the community. So thank you so much. Thank you, Terry. Our final guest is Jeff Helms. Jeff is the executive director at Park Springs. Jeff, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So I'm going to start with the same question that I asked Nadia and Tisha. How has life been post lock-in? Life here at Park Springs has been extremely busy. <laughs> we are back to a normal staff now. Yeah. and. We're creating plans to bring back as many services as possible to our members at a safe practice. We're okay. constantly reviewing the latest guidelines that are published weekly by the CDC, the World Health Administration, and local public facilities. Uh, this week, we are holding appreciation dinners for all of our member volunteers that helped us during the lock-in. So for the past three nights, we've had a, din a dinner for those that assisted with meal deliveries, those that assisted with, you know, wiping doorknobs, door handles, elevator buttons, and so forth. Oh, man, that that's awesome, uh, getting everybody involved. And I think, you know, getting back to as normal as you can is so critical, even, even for me with my children. You know, I'm trying to help them re-engage back into life with their friends in a safe way. You know, it's really challenging, but it, it's different, isn't it? It's uh, interesting. Yeah, most definitely. We've always been an organization, you know, that's mission driven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, seeing it firsthand, uh, firsthand action, it's changed all of us. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. So 
you were a part of the the leadership team that you know put this plan together uh, and decided to do this lockdown to protect the members. Can you tell me about your thoughts as the plan went from you know an idea to reality? Absolutely. We knew going in, locking in was the right thing to do. Yeah. However, we knew it was going to be a challenge. Yeah. Um, I honestly thought my team getting their buy-in would be easy, and it was. And once I got my team of directors buy-in, they reached out to their employees, and all of them just jumped right in. We were very pleased with the amount of people that volunteered so quickly. Yeah, Donna was sharing with that, just an incredible amount of people came forward. I mean, really, true, truly dedicated. Um, so what were some of the sacrifices you witnessed among your team over the 75 days? And maybe you could start with, you know, some of the things that you found that you needed to sacrifice in order to protect it and stop the spread of COVID-19 in the community. You know, a big sacrifice was leaving home. Uh, you know, leaving my wife, uh, but I got her support right off the bat. She understood how important it was. And she also, you know, pushed me and encouraged me to go forward and have an opportunity to lead others to help save lives. Yeah, that's amazing. And so it says a lot about your wife too. Really incredible. So what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced uh, while you were in the lock-in? The largest challenge was our food and beverage delivery. You know, we were used to having multiple dining restaurants open and having to change. We normally do about 30 to 35 deliveries in one day. During the lock-in, we did over a thousand meal deliveries a day. Normally we have a food and beverage staff of 34 people in one day. During the lock-in, we only had 14 food and beverage employees. So we had to pull employees from our administration office, our plan operations department, uh, myself and all to go and help and assist with these meal deliveries. Uh, as the members were witnessing this firsthand, that first night, I had several members come to me and say, Jeff, can we volunteer to give you and your staff a hand because we see the challenges that you are go going through. That list started with three, it ended with 15 volunteers, and then I had a waiting list, which was remarkable. Wow, that's incredible. I try to think about uh, that amount of ser serving that amount of people, right? Because you're protecting them, they're in their apartments. That That is an incredible challenge. And it's so cool to hear that the uh, the members were actually stepping in saying, hey, how can we help? What can we do? That's amazing. It's a very cool story. Um, you mentioned how they responded by stepping up and really wanting to volunteer and be part of this whole family or community initiative. Um, what were some of the other responses from from the members? about, you know, with the lock-in and what happened and what the teams did to support them? You know, it was so special. It really brought us together like a family. Yeah. And, you know, Mother's Day happened while we were here. Yeah. And we had a group of members that came together and wanted to put together a golf cart parade yeah. and, you know, drive around 60 plus acres. And just for our employees to see them, 90 plus degrees heat driving around with signs saying thank you you know it meant the world to all of the employees here it really encouraged us you know day in and day out yeah uh, you know, donna mentioned the parade to us on mother's day but she also mentioned that you did something special on that day for the members can you share with us what that was absolutely every week me and the directors would get together and brainstorm and talk about opportunities to you know make life better for the members and one of the directors had an idea to take all the benches that we had throughout the property and align them up at our back gate uh, six feet away from the fence and this allowed the members to go and have an opportunity to sit down and spend time with their children 
uh, which they were very thankful for. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, with uh, social distancing and especially with isolation um, really impacting us all, but in probably more for our, our elderly or elder population. Uh, that's fantastic because I, I, you know, I've noticed with my dad, you know, being alone for that two and a half months or whatever it was, it, it definitely has an impact. So that's that was an awesome idea and, and something wonderful. So I imagine as you went through this and you're working with your teams, you know, how did how did you grow as a leader through this experience? How did it how did it change you or what did it teach you about being a leader? You know, we have a solid group of directors here at Park Springs and without any doubt, it was them that made us be able to be successful during this lock in. Um, what I learned was each of us working side by side and our employees watching us elbow to elbow with them. It allowed us all the opportunity to grow together and become stronger. Yeah, I've heard that as a reoccurring theme uh, in the folks, Nadia and Tisha. Um, it seems to be something that really, um, really shone through through this whole experience is that you really all came together cohesively to all, you know, have one mission, which was to serve and, and take care of the members. So it's such a cool story. Um, We've been using the word hero to describe the staff at Park Springs. You know, I mean, 75 days is not a short time to be away from your families, your friends. You know, do you consider yourself a hero in this? I do. One of 75. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> All right. I got the chills. I always do. Every time I meet someone, I ask questions. It happens. Uh, that was the one. So that's awesome. So, um, what did you do when you finally went home? After pulling out 11 weeks of clothes out of the vehicle and getting <laughs> them upstairs, uh, the first thing I did was give my wife a big hug. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Uh, one of the things that we had planned for over two weeks, uh, you know, one of our favorite meals is, uh, a nice steak and a nice bottle of wine. So yeah. she had she had that waiting for us. So that was, you know, after giving her a big hug, we uh, opened a bottle of wine, had a nice dinner and shared lots of war stories. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. So out of this experience, we'd like to end it with, you know, is there anything else that you would like to add? It doesn't matter what it is, you know, with regards to the members, with regards to your team, with regards to your experience, please feel to share kind of as a parting thought. And um, I'm just going to leave it open. So feel free to share whatever you'd like. You know, one of the things that we did is we formed a task force here and we have multiple members that live here that used to work at the CDC, several former doctors, several uh, former leaders of surgeons. And we met weekly and we were surrounded by a wealth of knowledge. And, you know, to hear their advice on helping to be able to keep out the virus of the community, that's something that's irreplaceable. And, you know, to me, it was very special just to have that opportunity to gather this advice from them. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunity that I had to leave my team. And I really appreciate all of our employees, their dedication, their passion to serving members. And to me, that was what was worth being here, you know, for 75 days to watch them grow as young men and young women. And, you know, to be able to share this special time with the members as well, it brought us all together like a family. That's amazing. I, uh, I think very well said. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to share your story and for everything that you've done for the members of your community and of course for your teams keep up the great work and the passion that you guys have i'm just very happy that um 
you were you had success and then it also created all of these other benefits uh, for all of you you know as coming together as a team so thank you for your sharing your story i really appreciate it well thank you for your time today and thank you for having me my pleasure my pleasure Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Aging Choices and Twitter at My Aging Choices. Thank you for watching.